Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Happy Project Podcast. My name is Becky, and over here is my co-host, Cedric Skysetini. What's going on, everybody? Oh. And uh, well, you're listening to the Happy Project Podcast, and we're so happy that you're here today. Uh, 와주셔서 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 반갑습니다. 고마워. Oh, wow, he flipped it out there. Mm-hmm. Any of our Korean language speakers will understand that we are using two different types of language here. Formal and informal. Yeah, this oh. is the basis of the Korean language. Uh-huh, that's right. Or I was going to say 반말, 높임말, or 존댓말. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, okay, so today is kind of like a little... Language lesson, I guess, for our, our listeners. Yeah, but it's very significant because it ties into the culture. It absolutely does. D- it's like so deep, <laughs> ingrained into the culture. Yeah, it's going to so. explain. I think it will help explain a couple of uh, things. Before we jump into our episode, um, now we record our episodes in advance. And so we're not always exactly in the current news to those who are listening to this episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, we're probably a week or so behind the right, current event. Right, then what event. you might actually be reading on the news today as you're listening to this episode. So that being said, we understand that things rapidly change with current events and some major things that are happening. But in our time right now, there's the riots that are happening in the U.S. or the protests, and they're happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so people are starting to show solidarity for the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, if you want to support in some way, there are many ways that you can actually sign petitions online or you can make donations. Um, honestly, just search and there's going to be mm-hmm. so many things. So anyway, this is just to say if you guys are still out there protesting, we are here with you in spirit. 100%. All right. That being said, let us now talk about the episode. Okay. This is exciting because <laughs> we can go so many different ways with this. I know. Mm. Well, uh, let's let's break it down first. Okay. For those who do not speak Korean, let's try to explain the, the basic fundaments, fundamentals of uh, speaking in Korean. We're always saying like, oh, Korea is very hierarchical structure, mm-hmm. very social hierarchy structure, right? You call oppas and onnis and hyungs and nunas and you have like specific terms for those who are older than you. And we're aware that there's uh, these respectful barriers between ages yeah. and um, power levels, right? Right. But I think... Something some people might not be aware of is it's not only baked into the culture, it's baked into the language. Yeah. And could you take it away? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we have what's known as, uh, uh, well, let's let's say respectful language. Mm-hmm. And then we have the informal language. I guess formal and informal. Right. Okay. And actually, uh, it's not as binary as that. I mean, there's actually right. a spectrum of formality in the Korean language, and then there's just super informal. That's and right. there's like semi-informal, so there's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. And basically, uh, when it comes to formal language, that's sort of the, the default language or way of speaking because uh, when you address someone that you either don't know or you address someone who is in a higher position whether it's in work or in government mm-hmm. or... Or even in family. In family or someone who is older than you, mm-hmm. the default is respectful language. That's right. Most of the time. Now, there are exceptions. Mm-hmm. And so the way you speak is very... It's not negotiable. You know, yeah. in English, you can kind of f- be a little flexible with the respectful language, mm-hmm. but not in Korean. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, again, there are different levels of formality with that. And then you have the informal, which is... More so between either friends or if you're in a higher position of power and you're speaking <laughs> down to somebody. Yeah, it's literally yeah, that. Yeah. yeah um, or you're very close to each other, like in our case. Mm-hmm. Or even with like, you know, at a certain point, you can actually speak informally to your parents, depending uh-huh. on your type of relationship That's with them. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so those are the two basic types. And again, it's a little spectrum mm-hmm. with within that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what is the purpose of having these, these structures inside the language? What is the purpose of that? I would say 
it shows you where you fit in the societal mm-hmm. structure. Mm-hmm. I think I honestly think that is a major purpose of it because just knowing how uh, how say how Cedric talks to me, if he speaks to me like in a down tone, like very informal language, the first time we meet automatically i mean that would be extremely rude if you <laughs> right. did that but like over time it would be an indicator that oh becky is younger than him mm-hmm. or oh like they're very close right these are indicators right. that you can pick up from the way people talk to each other so let me give you an example um let's say that we're in a business setting there's my boss there's me there's the employee i'm meeting for the first time and then there's the employee that i'm close friends with mm. and then there's the employee who's younger than me oh i see okay what you're doing there. so the way i would speak we're all in the same meeting mm-hmm. i would say to my boss a certain way mm-hmm. it would be a very formal to my boss right then i could say the exact same thing to person i'm just meeting for the first time right oh right first time meeting or then to my coworker who I'm very close with, maybe I could say, oh, 안녕. But because we're in a formal setting, I might say, 안녕하세요. Mm-hmm. But to a worker who is younger than me and we're quite close or they're kind of like my my lower, mm-hmm. I would just say like, oh, 안녕. 왔어. Oh, you're here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? So the way I would speak to these people, even if we're in the exact same kind of setting. Right. Um, indicates where my level of ranking stands Mm -hmm. with them. So it kind of makes it easier in a way to navigate this hierarchical society, but also can be certainly tricky. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a good thing and a bad thing as I as I see it. Because one, you you never it's good because you you will always know your place or you can quickly know where your mm-hmm. place is. But then it, it can be negative because a lot of people feel kind of restricted restricted and weighed down by it and, and you know, even sometimes disrespected. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um and another thing is it sounds, you know, I can only imagine for those of you guys listening that may not be familiar with how the Korean language or the hierarchy system works here, it can sound overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But I think after some time here, you will just get it. It'll yeah. become just kind of internalized. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, for I think for Becky and I, whenever we're in any sort of situation, we automatically just know. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You fi- you just know right you away. You just know. And this is actually why oftentimes when you meet Koreans for the first time, they ask how old are you, Mm -hmm. right? Oh, what year are you in? So they can figure out, oh, if I'm your elder or you're my junior. Right. Um, How am I supposed to refer to you? Do I refer to you with a term of honor or can I call you by your name, you know? And this, by asking what's your age or what's your birth year, right? Um, You can figure out, okay, where in the structure do we fit? How Mm -hmm. am I supposed to talk to you? Because language is so intrinsic to the way that we show respect to people around us. So um, I just wanted to say another interesting point to maybe help people to understand how serious keeping this language and hierarchy and respectful forms, how serious it actually is. When um, I can't remember exactly when it was, it was a couple years ago, Mm -hmm. there was a specific airline here uh, and the pilots, the pilot was Korean, co-pilots were Korean. Okay. So it was Korean Airlines, obviously. (laughs) And um, it, the plane crashed. The plane crashed on the, what do you call it? The runway? runway. When it crashed down. Maybe mm-hmm. you remember this a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. And some people died. And uh, when they listened to the tape, because they can listen to the tape, what was happening at the cockpit at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah, I think it's like a black box or something like that. Right. That can, mm-hmm. You can hear them saying in Korean, the co-pilot is speaking to the pilot. And the terms he is using is um, not direct. Mm-hmm. It's like, Uh, maybe you should check the height. Oh, I think our speed might be a little too quick. Mm, And because of these language formalities, it is hard to speak very directly to your upper. Mm -hmm. Um, And so after that incident, and maybe it was also prior, but all training, especially in airlines, are made in English. Because English does not have those barriers mm-hmm, of right. respect and formality right wow that's that's a good point uh i think i do remember that situation though i mm-hmm. didn't hear about the whole you know uh, i guess the audio recording but yeah that's that's crazy when you're facing a potentially life or death situation mm-hmm. just within the the language itself 
people will have the hardest time just saying like, yo, dude, slow down, like chill out. You right. might be going too fast, that, you know what I mean? Or freaking out. Yeah, because, you would never hear that uh-huh, from like yeah, younger to an elder. Yeah, and so, and also you bring up a good point about uh, the way the, the language is passive. Mm-hmm. Like when you're addressing someone who's maybe in a higher position or older, a lot of times the language will be passive. Yeah, we call it 돌려말, like mm-hmm. to, it's like around, around. speech. Yeah. yeah, like I give you a good example Instead of saying to somebody, it depends, of course, what exactly you want to say. But like um, when you're doing interviews or I see this on TV a lot, it's more like asking uh, kind of almost to a third person. Oh, I mean, what if in this kind of situation, wouldn't that be such a strange thing? You mm-hmm. ask it kind of like that instead of saying, don't you think it's strange? Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. this round speech can make it hard in um, tense situations right. or or like you're trying to be very direct. Right. Because it's baked into the language. Mm-hmm. And we separate those things by 반말, informal language, or 높임말 or 존댓말, which is formal language. Right. So it's very distinct in the Korean language. And it plays a huge part. And how people navigate the social and business world Mm -hmm. here. You know, it's funny. Yeah. (laughs) Even within the language, like when you're like, let's just say you're encountering strangers. Mm. Like I've seen this uh, actually in real life. I've also seen it in like movies and TV, like. When these two people who don't really know each other, they're not close, they're fighting. Mm. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, Isn't that funny? Yeah, they're like clearly <laughs> angry at each other, but they still have a level of respect in the language. Yes, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So they might raise their voice and they might look angry, but they'll still, you know. They're forced to use the, the formal form with each <laughs> that other. That is funny. Now, I think that, it's funny that doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like if you're just so mad, yeah. you know, they might just go to like Panma or just like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. informal language. And just call them names or something. But <laughs> right. um, yeah, a lot of times, even in tense argument, uh, like in arguments or something, mm-hmm. they might even still use right. There's still the this level, language. this layer because it's mm-hmm. inside the language. So, do you feel comfortable using uh, respectful terms or informal terms? Uh, I feel comfortable in that I like the position mentally for me I'm, I'm comfortable because i'm used to it yeah i grew up respecting elders yes mm-hmm. I totally grew up that way um it is a little bit difficult for me to speak it because i always second guess myself and like oh what if i didn't say that correctly or mm-hmm. respectfully so i do get a little nervous in that way but uh, i am generally comfortable with it because yeah. i i feel like i have a uh, korean brain mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. can see things through the korean lens and also have my american brain mm-hmm. so in certain situations with korean people say for example in the workplace um when i'm surrounded by coworkers and bosses i'm in the korean mindset mm. um even though i can't communicate as fluently as i need to mm-hmm. like i still understand Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's just it's it's a little strange but yeah Mm -hmm. so i'm 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 used to it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah same here i'm so used to it in fact that uh, one time i went to a cafe and when i was ordering at the cafe sometimes you know like cafe can be a little bit more informal with you if you've been there often Mm -hmm. or um you're obviously younger than them Actually, typically not in the service area, like even in service. Mm-hmm. But regardless, I went to this cafe and the guy, the cafe guy who was working there, who was maybe my age, maybe a little bit older, he thought I was like a really young student. And so he called me Hakseng, which is student. Mm-hmm. So instead of Sonim, which is customer, usually you'd say, oh, respected customer, right? right. He called me Hakseng, which is student without any term of respect. He was like, oh, 학생 뭐 줄까? Like that. Right. Like, hey, student, wh- what do you want? Very informally. And something inside me that I didn't even realize bulked <laughs> a little bit. And I was like, excuse me. Right, You're right. Like, Are you using informal speech with me, your mm-hmm. customer? And it like just was something that... Um, came out of me mm-hmm. without even realizing. And so I just was I just was like, okay, shake it off and moved along. But I was thinking, say I was in the States, you know, cafe worker could say be like, hey, what do you want? What can I get you? Right? Mm-hmm. Which you wouldn't consider it necessarily as rude. Right. It's more like the tone of voice you're using or maybe you're using different kind of language like, mm-hmm. hey, you, you over there, w- what do you want? <sighs> you know what I mean? Then you would feel like, okay, that's a little bit rude. Right. But in itself, the term in itself, hey, what do you want is not necessarily rude mm-hmm. but in korean it's actually literally inside 
the form of the grammar structure that yeah. makes it rude or not rude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another thing that I, I actually like about the formalities and informalities. Mm-hmm. Like when you're meeting someone, let's just say you, you slightly know somebody. Uh, maybe you've come across them a couple of times or they're mutual friends, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with someone that you know. And once the switch goes from formal to informal, mm-hmm. it's almost like a good feeling. It's like, oh. Okay, yes, cool. And yeah. then you feel like automatically closer. That's right. You really it's, do. It's, it's really weird because yeah. in America that that never happens with no. English. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as soon as that, you know, let's just say, for example, like as soon as a girl, a younger girl calls like me oppa, mm-hmm. you know well, what I mean? You can use like, you can use formal language with oppas. I've done that. Right, right, right. No, of yeah. course, of course. But like, let's just say uh, we've become informal in the language Mm -hmm. you know and we're both comfortable enough like then i all of a sudden one i feel closer and two i feel like oh now i have to kind of protect or i have Mm -hmm. to you know take care of Mm -hmm. you know immediately the relationship has changed yeah yeah Yeah, so it's 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 something i never really really thought about Mm -hmm. but that's what happens it's actually even uh that the point that you just raised up is actually kind of like a milestone in relationships actually they call mm. it like pan uh-huh. like uh like informal language <laughs> relationship right. i guess cuz once once you are in that pan that informal what what is sai how would you explain Kinda that like like relationship yeah sai yeah mm. and connection Con- but something like yeah, that right but relationship that's a milestone in relationships mm-hmm. because oftentimes more often than not you have the girl who's younger than the guy or she's using respectful terms with him and then he says hey, aren't we close enough now? We can use like informal yeah. language. Right. That indicates like, oh, we just got that much closer. Right. So even yeah. that in itself, expressing what kind of language we're using mm-hmm. shows to people, this is how close our relationship is. Right. Is that funny? That, that is funny when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I find that very fascinating. There's even a little love song by, um, I think it's CN Blue, where it's talking specifically about that, like, oh, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. now we are informal informal language right. relationship. <laughs> it's weird to say it in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's how significant it is. Yeah. It makes total sense, though, um, to the Korean mind. Mm-hmm. It really does. And in fact, it actually can feel uh, more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, in a way, you can feel a little uncomfortable, but it's also like a, um, it is verbal, of course, but it's a non-obvious way to express to another person, hey, like, let's not cross the line here. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to keep it business, you always use like formal terms. Right. Um, I have a, I want to say friend, but we're not really friends. He's an oppa. Um, I always would use like informal speech with him. Mm-hmm. But then I started noticing he was always using formal speech with me, even mm-hmm. though he's my oppa. This to me was a clear indication. Oh, he doesn't want that close. We're business close. relationship. Yeah. And so I go back to using formal mm-hmm. language that was right. my fault for moving too fast <laughs> but um these is these are indication points or even if you're fighting with yeah. a friend sometimes if you want to express hey giving you the cold shoulder even with your close friend you will use formal speech mm-hmm. and that's like whoa a clear sign that you're not happy with me right you have separated you made the distance between us right yeah yeah and i would venture to say in the say for example workplace context mm-hmm. um like to your bosses unless you're just like low-key super tight with them or he's your (laughs) brother or something Uh you're never probably ever going to use informal language with them especially in the workplace Mm -hmm. i mean maybe outside depending on your relationship but like you and your boss yeah 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 and i was in a position where uh even when i was at a korean company and i had you know i had some people who were my juniors Mm -hmm. and people my seniors obviously um i always kept it like Mm -hmm. the whole time like yeah formal um it's just respect yeah honestly it's it's a way to show respect to your coworkers. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah but you know it's it was cool because then it like it just defined the fact that we're just okay we're just co-workers yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah you don't have to make it awkward Mm -hmm. like you don't even have to talk like i don't want to hang out with you after work because we're not friends like Mm -hmm. you don't have to make (laughs) that explanation Mm -hmm. it's just clear in how you speak to each other, just in the language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find it extremely interesting. And that to me also sh- makes me feel in a way that Korean language, though it is also very complicated, in a way is also very simple. Because in English, let's say, for example, um, you want to use 
uh, like you want to say go away to somebody.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can use okay, go.、Uh, why don't you leave? Go away.、Mm-hmm. Get out of here. And the different types of words you're using. To shift up the phrase determines how polite or impolite it is. Right. But in Korean, you just have one verb, kada.、Mm-hmm. Just that one verb, and just by tacking on a different grammatical structure,、right. it will indicate what you're actually trying to say. Go away, right. kada. Right. right. Oh, kaju seo, please leave. Right. But you're not actually changing the verb itself.、Mm-hmm. Which、right. is so interesting to me. Right. For example, you can say that to like. Let's just say there's this like super old. You know, <laughs> grandpa, that's annoying you. <laughs> like, and let's just say this、uh-huh. is like you、yeah. you own a business. They come into your business and they're <laughs> like, like annoying you、really、and your customers、you. or something like that. You could say,、uh, you know, kaseo, like、yeah. you、oh. know, even up to that point. Kajuseo,、yeah. kajuseo. Please leave. Right.、Mm-hmm. And if you're like really like just like, kajuseo, yeah. Like, hey. Please, I said leave. Right, but, but you're never. Not, it's still formal. You're never gonna say ah ga naga. Right, you know, right. Like、That's, get out. That could be pretty. Never.、Rude. You, you just、yeah. never. Yeah. yeah, that was really like um uh a stunning point to me when I heard、mm. that for the first time at actually a restaurant that happened. There、mm-hmm. was an old man who came in and he was being really really bothersome. And then the lady who was trying to serve, she was like, "Jom kaju seo." She、mm-hmm. said, "Hey, please leave." And she said it with very formal speech, right?、Mm-hmm. And he was still like. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> he was just like bopping around, and then she said "kashiragoyo," <laughs> which still maintains、right. the formality of it,、uh, but can express like、right. what she's really trying like to I say. Said, I、go. said, "Please leave,"、mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's it's funny because it's still polite, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. So、mm-hmm. I think in that way, it makes it easier to navigate.、Um, Your social relationships, even、yeah. when you're in those weird situations, because you always know what your place is going to be. Yeah, never second guessing. Yeah, yeah. And here's a little safe tip for our Korean language learners out there: always err on the safe side.、Mm-hmm. Always assume that、mm-hmm. you don't know them or they're older than you.、Right. Even kids, even people who are younger than you. I mean, if they're like little children, it's a different story. But somebody who might be only a few years younger than you. Um, or they're your friend's younger sister. Even in this kind of case, if you don't have that established relationship, just using informal speech right away can come off a little bit rude.、Mm-hmm. So it's it's better to come off a little bit stilted and you know stuffy at first, right? And then you know as you develop a relationship using informal speech, because informal speech is reserved for, totally for the special ones、mm-hmm. or the ones you're close with or、right. like little children.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. We decided to keep this episode pretty short and sweet because I think it's harder to get into the ins and outs of panmai and dopimai without actually physically showing somebody,、mm-hmm. you know, and explaining what each section means. But we just thought we would clear up maybe some questions you might have about formal speech and what it actually means in Korea and Korean culture. So that being said, is there anything else you'd like to add before we move on to George's corner? Ah,、uh, no, no. I think. I think it's good because we'll just start going on another、uh, <laughs> rant, another tangent. Yeah, yeah, which is always fun, but、uh, yeah, not tonight, sir. No,、nah, we, we will save it for a future episode. Sounds good. So that being said, it's time for George's corner. So I have been emailing George, of course, and we go back and forth. He's kind of my pen pal in the states. If you don't know who he is, then you probably should listen to some previous episodes. But we mentioned George; he's an elderly、uh, ex-American soldier who is currently living in the States, and he had fallen in love with a Korean woman while he was here in 1958, and they lost touch in the 60s. He's been looking for her ever since, and so we are somewhat of a link between him and his past here in Korea. And so we just talk about how he is and sharing what it's like here, and he shares with us his stories and experiences. So he's really a treasure trove of、uh, of the past,、mm. living relic. So、uh, we share messages with him, and those messages he writes back to us, we read to you, dear listener. And if you ever want to write to him. You can send it to me at thehalfprojectgmail.com, and I will write to him on your behalf. So we got a message from him. This was actually a couple months ago. I'm trying to get you guys caught up on all of our emails, but this is a short and sweet one. I thought I'd just share. Dear Becky, I haven't heard from you in a long, long time. I do hope this finds you well. Is your business doing well? I have had my 85th birthday last month. Time continues to fly by. 
Becky, do you know any older Korean that would talk with me about the 1950s and 1960s in or near Seoul? Hanamdong really interests me. Thank you, your friend George. So, well, first off, happy belated birthday yeah. to dear George. And uh, you heard him just say that. He's looking for somebody who will talk to him about um, Seoul and Hanamdong in the 50s and 60s. Looking for somebody who maybe he can relate to or they can share stories or connect over that. So if that's you or maybe one of your parents and you think they would be interested in talking to George or just have some questions for him and we can get the conversation started for you, um, please get in touch. We know George would really, really appreciate it. That would be awesome for him. I know. It would be mm. so lovely. So um, if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and write in at thehalfwayproject at gmail.com. All right. We're going to just wrap up now. Do you want to wrap up? You want me to wrap up? Uh, I will try to wrap up. Okay. You know what it is. Hit up the, the socials, the subscribe, and email. And, <laughs> and then you pull it together with our final phrase okay this is going to be my first attempt to close out the podcast so mm -hmm. bear with me but thank you guys so much for listening and also watching if you're watching on youtube and if you are on youtube make sure you subscribe to the happy project on youtube but since this is the podcast <laughs> make sure you subscribe uh -huh. to wherever you listen to your podcast follow us on social media at the happy project on instagram and also on facebook mm -hmm. and if you have any questions or you just just want to share your story write to us at the happy project at gmail.com did i get everything that was perfect oh, i should have just went and ended that's it that's right i'll do it for you thanks for listening everybody we are the happy project